the Buddha does talk about being in the present moment. He never says to just hang out in the present moment, be fully present to the present moment. It's always in the context of death contemplation. Death could happen at any time, and there are duties that have to be done. If you don't do them now, they're not going to get done. There's one famous poem in Marjimir 131. It starts out saying this, You shouldn't chase after the past or place expectations on the future. What is past is left behind, the future is yet unreached. Whatever quality is present, you clearly see right there, right there, not taken in, unshaken. That's how you develop the heart, ardently doing your duty today for who knows tomorrow, death. There is no bargaining with death and its mighty hoard. So, this concept of there's a duty that should be done. We focus on the present moment because we are creating suffering in the present moment and we want to learn how to stop. It comes from our actions, and so it's important to understand the Buddhist take on what are, exactly are we doing in the present moment, and how does that shape our experience. Well, the Dharma teaches us what to accept, and there are the influences coming in from the past. We can't go back and change our past karma. But we also have the ability to do something about this raw material coming in from the past, and shaping it into our present experience. So we have a choice in how we're going to shape that material. And that's something also we have to accept, that we are playing a role in this. So we have to look in to see what is that role that we're playing. The things the Buddha tells us not to accept in addition to what we're doing that's unskillful. He says he, he doesn't accept a lazy and defeatist attitude. Suffering does have a source, but it doesn't really come from your past actions. It comes from what you're doing right now. When you look at the images of the Buddha, the people who are on the path, there's never the image of somebody sort of sitting back and just accepting. It's always images of people who are searching, people who are engaged in battle, people who are trying to develop a skill. In other words, trying to learn how to be more skillful in how they shape the present moment. And he actually calls the Eightfold Noble Path the unexcelled victory in battle. So there, there's a battle to be won, and there's work to be done. And the Buddha gives you another example. Every night when the sun sets, you remind yourself, I could die tonight, am I ready to go? Are there any qualities in my mind that would make it difficult for me to let go? And if so, focus on working on those qualities, abandoning those causes of suffering. The same thing in the morning when the sun rises. This could be my last sunrise, I could die today. Am I ready to go? If not, there's work I've got to do right now. These duties that the Buddha is referring to here, of course, are the duties that come under the Four Noble Truths. There is suffering. What is the suffering? You want to comprehend it. There are a lot of things we do that create suffering, but we just hold on to them. And the Buddha wants you to look carefully at that. Do you see, okay, you're doing this, you're causing yourself suffering. Is it worth doing it? That's the duty with regard to the first noble truth. The second noble truth is the cause of suffering, which is craving. That should be abandoned. When you see the cause of suffering, that's what you let go. And most of us get these duties confused. We try to let go of the suffering. First, you understand what induced you to cling to begin with. What was the desire that you had? That's what you let go of. Otherwise, it's like going into a house, seeing the house is filled with smoke, and you put out the smoke. As long as you keep putting out the smoke, it's not going to stop. You've got to find where is the fire. Put out the fire, and then you're done. The duty with the third noble truth, which is the cessation of suffering, is to realize when you finally do let go of the craving, that there is a moment where the suffering ceases. But the Buddha says, ultimately, there is a point where you stop the craving entirely. And that's the end of suffering. You have this passion for it. So you try to realize that, and then there's a path, the path is to be developed. By engaging in the present moment in a more skillful way, we create better conditions for the future. And also, we're not stuck here. We're not stuck in this house. The house is constantly burning. You can't stop it from burning, but the Buddha says there is a fire escape. And so we look for the fire escape through the practice. Ultimately, there is a freedom that is not flammable that will not burn us. And it's outside of past, present, and future entirely. And because it's outside of time, it's not going to be touched by anything. Once you've gained it, you've gained it for good. <laughs>